All right, welcome back. We are now exactly at the point where I last left off, where our eccentricity is down to 0 .0078, and uh, the International Space Station's eccentricity is at uh, 0 .0010. What I'm going to be covering in this lesson is the fact that I'm going to reduce my eccentricity until I have matched my orbital parameters to the International Space Station. Just as a reminder, uh, my orbital parameters are on the left here in green. The International Space Station's orbital parameters are in yellow. To quickly go over what these mean again, periapsis, that is the shortest point of my orbit, the shortest distance between that point in the orbit and the uh, core of the Earth. Apoapsis is the opposite. It is the highest point, my furthest point away from the core of the Earth. Eccentricity is exactly how circular my orbit is. Zero is something which is perfectly zero. I'm sorry, uh, perfectly circle. That is fault zero. Although these circles, these uh, zeros are oval. Anyway, off the points. I tend to do that if you noticed. And uh, one is something that's not coming back. Uh, that is, I'm spiraling off into deep space, which is bad. Well, at least on this mission. Time is how long it takes me to go in a complete orbit. Periapsis time is how long it takes me to uh, get to my periapsis. That's a countdown to that. Apoapsis time is how long it's going to take me uh, to get back to my apoapsis. So what I'm doing right now is my periapsis is 6.676 and theirs is 6.732. My apoapsis is 6.781 and theirs, the International Space Station's, is 6.746. So I need to lower my apoapsis, and I need to uh, raise my periapsis. So that, in effect, is going to ta uh, bring my eccentricity uh, lower. So I am 758 seconds away from my periapsis, at which point that I'm going to need to perform a retrograde burn. That is, I'm going to point away from the direction that I'm heading in orbit. That way, when I burn my engines, I slow down. When I slow down, that's going to take my apoapsis and uh, lower it. So I'm going to lower my apoapsis from 781 to 746. So let me uh, unpause here. Now, I'm not going to make you sit here for 750 seconds. I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Okay, so I am now at periapsis, I believe. Yes, I'm at periapsis. So I'm going to hit retrograde autopilot, which is going to turn me the other direction. Now remember, this is the number that we're looking at, apoapsis radius. So I'm going to fire my engines until these, this 8-1 becomes 4-6. I must point out that I am still over the night. Uh, last we checked in, I was, well, pretty much over here. Alright. You'll notice that my HUD has changed. I switched it to a, uh... Wait, did I switch it? Hold on. There we go. Okay, now my HUD has changed. I've switched it to an orbital HUD as opposed to a, uh, air HUD, or a, uh, surface HUD. So now this is a lot easier. So I, so 180 heading is now my uh, retrograde, and uh, 0 heading would be my prograde. So now I can more easily manipulate that. That is more useful while I'm up in space. So without blabbering any further, I'm going to start lowering my apoapsis. Note that this is going down uh, pretty rapidly. So I'm going to approach the end of this pretty... Uh, so I'm looking for 746. Nudge it that last bit. There, 746. 
So now I'm going to turn off my autopilot. My apoapsis radius now matches the International Space Station, and you'll notice my eccentricity has gone down. Now, my next plan here is when I get to my apo, my new apoapsis, I need to. It looks like I need to raise my periapsis, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be performing a prograde burn there to make myself go faster. Once again, I will accelerate time. trying to not overshoot it again. Alright, so now I have 10 seconds to explain what I'm about to do. These autopilots, keep in mind, will not actually fire my engines, they will only manipulate my angle using uh, thrusters on the sides of my ship. So when I hit prograde to do my prograde burn, it's not firing my main engine. What it's doing, actually, if I give you a quick view out, you'll see that it's a uh, going to be firing my thrusters. Just give it a bit here. Uh, when it gets too far, you actually kind of see them f here. Let me give you a better view. These thrusters off to the side here are going to fire. Uh, you notice the earth. There we go. So now it's trying to slow me down. So that's all the autopilot controls, these thrusters. These are my main engines, which uh, they don't fire. So all the orbital maneuvers, there's really very little way to uh, autopilot through orbit. It just doesn't happen. Anyway, so I am now at apoapsis, and I'm going to raise my periapsis from 676 to 732. Fire. Fire. This, remember, this is the number I'm watching, my periapsis altitude. Now, as I approach 732, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to pull back on my thrust. 71. Seven, 72, 722, 724. I'm looking for 732. Boom! I hit it without having to slow down. So I have now not quite matched the International Space Station. What you notice is that when they're this close to each other, the Earth is not perfectly round. The Earth is uh, made of continents, water. Mass is not e evenly distributed. So what this ne means for me is that as I pass over, as I orbit, let's say that I pass over... Uh, Europe and uh, Asia here. Passing over that landmass, or even passing over varying densities in the Earth, caused my orbit to get thrown off a little. So when I get this perfect, when I get this close, I start to get thrown off because, for example, my apoapsis got thrown off and my periapsis also got thrown off, but not by anything significant. But over the course of, say, a bunch of orbits, let me just uh, fast forward so you see this. Let me just turn off my autopilot so I don't get thrown off. I'm going to time warp forward. You're going to notice my numbers start to freak out and get weird. So you see my eccentricity has is now 11. My uh, periapsis and apoapsis are going to change a little bit occasionally. Or at least they should be. Um, they didn't. Maybe I accelerated too fast. Um, 
you can't see it, but I've got this time acceleration window here that I'm actually dragging around with my mouse. You hit that by going to F4, go up here, click Time Warp. What that does is that accelerates your orbit. What that could have been is that 1000x just maintains my current orbit and calculates where I would be at that time. So that's probably why I wasn't decaying the way I should have. At 1x and even 10, it's actually doing the physics modeling. So at 1x, as I'm uh, playing around with my orbit trying to sync, other parameters that I fixed before are going to kind of go a little wacky. You'll also notice that uh, actually I spin. Or I should be spinning. Let me try that. On. Oh, there, there we go. What? No. That's a bug. So, what you want to do is you want to never apply any kind of thrust. Uh, this time I didn't even apply thrust. Sometimes it'll bug out at high accelerations. So here's a uh, warning. These two use with extreme caution because this will happen. So 100x and 1000x use them with extreme caution because occasionally you'll just bug out and die. Um... I'm going to fix this, and I'm going to relaunch into a synchronized orbit with the International Space Station. So I'm going to head into essentially the same direction they're heading. Uh, see you next lesson.